Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Cayman SH-2 Sea Sprite. The Cayman SH-2 Sea Sprite is a ship-based helicopter originally developed and produced by American manufacturer Cayman Aircraft Corporation. It has been typically used as a combat and fast-moving rotorcraft for utility and anti-submarine warfare missions. Development of the Sea Sprite had been initiated during the late 1950s in response to a request from the United States Navy, calling for a suitably fast and compact naval helicopter for utility missions. Cayman's submission, internally designated the K-20, was favored, favorably evaluated, leading to the issuing of a contract for the construction of four prototypes in an initial batch of 12 production helicopters, designated as the HU-2K-1. Under the 1962 United States Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System, the HU-2K was redesignated the H-2. The HU-2K-1 became the UH-2A. Beyond the U.S. Navy, the company had also made efforts to acquire other com customers for export sales, in particular the Royal Canadian Navy. However, the initial interest of the Canadians was quelled as a result of Cayman's demand for price increases and the sea spray performing below company projections during its sea trials. Due to this unsatisfactory performance from 1968 onwards, the U.S. Navy's existing UH-2s were remanufactured from their originally delivered single-engine arrangement to a more powerful twin-engine configuration. The version we have here in front of us is, that, is going to be that modified um, twin engine configuration, which uh, makes the Sea Sprite obviously a little bit more capable than the previous kind of underpowered one. Um, the aircraft did see service in the Vietnam War, um, in which the type was primarily used to rescue downed friendly air crews within the theater of operations and its deployment during the Gulf War, where Sea Sprites conducted combat support and surface warfare operations against hostile Iraqi forces. Um, and then other than that, it really just kind of performed um, very, uh, you know, typical uh, patrol uh, type of uh, missions and uh, really just kind of didn't um, do much in terms of uh, military involvement in, besides those two wars. The type was finally withdrawn in 2001 when the last examples of the final variant known as the SH-2G Super Sea Sprite were retired. During the 1990s and 2000s, ex-U.S. Navy Sea Sprites were offered to various Nations as a form of foreign aid, which typically met with mixed interest and a limited uptake. So, yeah, pretty, uh, you know, interesting helicopter. Or pretty, it, it, it's cool. It's a cool helicopter. Uh, very unique design. As we'll take a look at it a little bit further, we'll if we kind of see that compact type design. Um, but again, cool helicopter and a nice one to add to our ever-growing um, fleet of American aircraft. Before we go ahead and jump in to take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give special links to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and play the small amount to the channel every month and in doing so, earn a video request of your choosing per month for your patron. Again, it really helps support the work I do on my channel and is obviously very really greatly appreciated. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the Sea Sprite. So the Sea Sprite here, it's a... Um, Pretty small helicopter in relative terms. It's got a very unique landing gear setup as well, with these weird kind of um, deployable uh, front landing gear. Uh, not sure the design inspiration behind that, but it is definitely a unique type design. We uh, also have the little radar dome under the bottom there, our sonar, uh, one of the two for its anti submarine missions. Um, this one is also the kind of first um, generation of Sea Sprites where it has the um, exhaust actually routed to the sides rather than the back here of the um, aircraft. We then have a torpedo mount on the side here, which again used for anti-submarine warfare capabilities. And then over here on the other side, we have a external fuel pylon as well as a sonar uh, kind of buoy or um, you know sonar uh, that they can drag along in the water to help aid in um, detecting enemy submarines and all that stuff. Um, going back further, we have obviously the National Science City on the side of the aircraft, nothing too fancy. Um, the landing gear on the back here is fixed. And then we have the Navy, obviously written on the side here, a um, nice kind of yellow accent markings, um, which was based off of some real uh, Sea Sprite 
uh, color configurations. Overall, pretty cool build. Um, I wish I could have got a little bit more of that navy color, but just unfortunately to the block restrictions here of Minecraft, um, we weren't able to get it too uh, perfect, but um, it is it is pretty good for the most part. It has that blue color, and I mean, you're going to look at that, and you're going to see that, know for sure that's a naval aircraft. We will have both the in-flight and landed version available in this tutorial, so just to give you guys a look at the in-flight version, you can see um, the in-flight version right up here. So again, pretty much... Um, you know, the landed version just without that, those four landed gear. So, anyways, though, uh, with that all out of the way, we'll go ahead and move into our tutorial here by going ahead and starting with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we will be going ahead and moving into layer number three. Now, we'll be starting with layer three because it gives us a better basis to kind of build off of and we'll just kind of overall help the flow of the tutorial a little bit better. In addition, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, a few things I want to go ahead and mention. First being that if you are, um, completely new the way i like to structure them is i like to do half on camera half off what this means i'm going to build the entire center line of the aircraft and then the right side it would be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side it's uh pretty straightforward nothing too crazy we do have a few asymmetrical parts here in these kind of layers three and four and we'll talk about this a little bit further in detail once we get to those sections to uh, for the time being anything i do on the right side will be done over to the uh, on the left side in addition, if you do want to build the aircraft landed, um, you will want to make sure that you build this a certain height off the ground because we will be adding the landing gear at the end as a modification. To go ahead and make sure that you build this correctly, you do want to make sure that you set up your build like so. Um, so you're going to have basically two blocks of space between the ground and layer three. So you should have layers one and two basically sitting up from the ground and layer three here is going to sit again that third layer up from the ground level. Very important to make sure that's correct because it's not going to sit right if you um, do not place it correctly yeah high ways anyways though without the way let's go ahead and get started with this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a polished black stone upside down stair or sorry top slab behind that we're going to place down a upside down piston for java players and players that have access to a debug stick if you do not have access to a debug stick instead of the piston i would recommend going ahead and either using a uh, blue terracotta block or using a polished black stone upside down stair that's going to sit like this after that, behind this block, we're going to go ahead and then take our blue terracotta, and we're going to place down a row down the center. This row here is going to be a total of eight blocks. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down four pistons upside down, a polished blackstone top slab, a polished blackstone upside down stair, and then one, two more polished blackstone top slabs, a polished blackstone wall, and then two birchwood trap doors. Again, for this section here, for the replacement here, you can go ahead and place down two blue terracotta blocks, and then um, two polished blackstone top slabs, as that will work. But um, yeah, you know, that's just going to be the best course of action there. Um, is going to be using the pistons. After that's done, coming off the piston here, we're going to go and place down a polished blackstone top slab here to the side, as well as a dark oak wood sign coming off the side of that um, slab. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three blue terracotta back from it, a polished blackstone top slab, and then one, two, three, four blue terracotta. We're going to go ahead and do the same trick here for pistons. So we're going to place down four pistons up to now. One, two, three, four. So just like that. Then after we have that all done there, we're going to go to our side here again. We're going to place down a polished blackstone wall coming off the side here. And then we're going to place down two blue terracotta blocks back. Coming off the side of the blue terracotta blocks, we're going to place down two birchwood buttons. And then coming off this uh, polished blackstone wall, you can either place down a uh, wither skeleton skull. So this, or you can use a technique here, which will be involving our debug stick. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a tripwire hook, and we're going to place it down on a side of a block, so it's going to be kind of next to this uh, wall. And what we're going to do here for Java players is we're going to type in the command slash give app p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here, press and enter, will give you this debug stick. You can then left click the tripwire hook until you get selected facing. We'll then right click it and rotate this around to connect up to that polished blackstone wall and coming off of it we're going to place down a chain going forward like so and the same thing will be done there on both sides after we have that done we're going to then place down a block of coal then a dark oak with sign on the side there we're going to go ahead and then go back from this with a birchwood fence gate a diorite wall a item frame on the side of the wall as well as a smooth quartz block in the item frame birchwood sign and then we're going to take our um well rather at this point this is where we start to get into our differences. So we're going to talk about the left side to begin with. And the left side here, after that diorite wall, we're going to place down two blue stained glass panes. So at this point in time, I would actually recommend to go ahead and copy uh, both sides over, basically from that 
to where we have that direct wall. So you have the whole front done and it brings you back to this direct wall here. You don't have this in here yet, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail. So again, I would recommend building this other side, this left side, all, all up to where we have the right side currently, and then go ahead and resume the tutorial. I'll give you a sec to pause if need to. And with that, we're going to go ahead and talk about this area. So hopefully at this point you have this side built, and we're going to go ahead and go after this diver wall with two more blue um, stained glass panes. Then we're going to place down a row of two of polished blackstone top slabs. We're going to skip a space and then place down our top slab here. Coming off this first top slab, we're going to place down a smooth quartz block. And then we're going to go back with the smooth quartz block. And then a second one back, so you have a total of three here. On the sides of the first two, we're going to place down acacia wood buttons. And we're also going to place down two here on the bottom as well. We're going to go ahead and place down a red concrete block on the very front here. And then a skeleton skull coming off that, that block. Then after the uh, quartz block here, we're going to place down two of these direct walls. And then an iron trap door on the back here. Now we will use our debug stick here to actually change the properties of our trapdoor. This can be using um, left clicking until we get selected open true pop up or we'll right click it and we can actually close it, open it, whatever we need to do. So that it lays flat there against that wall. Again, you can use a birchwood trapdoor also as an alternative to the iron trapdoor. On the other side here, it's gonna be a little bit different. So for our right side, we're gonna place down two of these um, walls that are gonna sit just like this. We're going to go ahead and grab our blue terracotta. We're going to place down one, two, three, four uh, walls back. And we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some wither skeleton skulls. We're going to place down one on this section here. So we'll delete this sign. And we're going to place down our wither skeleton skull like that. If you are on Java, you're able to do this. If you're not on Java, you will have to delete the item frame as well to get this to fit. Then on the other end here, we're going to place down a um, wither skeleton skull as well. Now with that all done, we're gonna go ahead and then go to this block here. We're gonna go ahead and skip a space over, place down a polished blackstone top slab, and then a wither skeleton skull. We wanna go ahead and then go back from this with a red uh, nether brick top slab. So go ahead and grab that real quick, wherever that might be. So here, so we have a red nether brick top slab. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a birchwood slab, place down a birchwood slab. And then I'm going to go ahead and place down another red uh, narrow brick fence post. So like that. And we're going to go ahead and place down wither skeleton schools on the two sides here. And also on top. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and grab some birchwood signs and also some acacia wood signs. On the birchwood slabs, we're going to place down the signs of birchwood. And then on the red nether brick, we're going to place down a acacia wood sign on both sides. So that's going to be here on the right side, and that's going to be basically the difference between the two sides. So taking a look at it like this, this is what it should look like from the top-down view with this layer all complete. You know, to make sure you take into good account those two differences. And once we have that all squared away, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our lower layers, which will be layers one and two. Moving into our lower layers, we have layers one and two. For these layers to start with, we're going to place down a direct wall that's going to be underneath this first blue terracotta block here in the center. And then behind that, we're going to place down a smooth quartz block and then another direct wall. We're going to go ahead and then place down a white stingless pane coming off the side of this wall, a direct wall back, and another white stingless pane like that to go ahead and round off your um, back section here. Or this, not back section, but this um, lower kind of ray dome here on the bottom. Now, after that is all complete, we're going to go ahead and then go back to our uh, rear upside down stair here. We're going to place down a polished blackstone wall that comes down from it. A wither skeleton is going from off the side of the wall facing toward the rear. And then a um, block of coal on the bottom here. In this block of, or on the sides of the block of coal, uh, we will place down a um, item frame. So there's going to be an item frame on both sides and then we're going to place down a smooth quartz block in the item frame. If you are on Java, we can also place down a dark liquid sign on the side of the block of quartz as well to kind of help hide the item frame a little bit better. But yeah, it's going to look something just like that there, and that is really it for layers one and two. Pretty simple stuff, pretty easy layers. And um, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a uh, blue terracotta block on top of this polished blackstone top slab. We're going to place down a second blue terracotta block back, and then two black concrete. After that, we want to go and then place down a row of blue terracotta all the way down the center here and on top of that wall for a total of 15. And then two yellow concrete and then a blue terracotta block on the back there. 
After that is all done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a polished black snow wall on the side here of this block, a black stained glass block back from that, two black concrete, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, um, and this right here is where we get a bit of a difference. So depending on what you want to do, if you do want to go ahead and have this extra kind of like chart depth charges or some sort of um, basically uh, launchable devices, if you want to have this kind of open and exposed on this helicopter, you're more than welcome to. Just in this space here, you will need to place down a gray um, choker box on its side, and this is only located on the left side of the aircraft. And then we have a wooden trap door on it like so. So again, we'll talk about that a little bit further. Um, but on the left side here, you'll place down that gray um, shortcut box. Over here on the right side, it's just going to be a continued row of blue concrete or blue terracotta. So we have um, after that four, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we're going to place down a smooth quartz block, a diorite wall, two black polished black stone walls, two blue stained glass panes, and a yellow stained glass pane there on the very end. After uh, that is all complete, we are going to go ahead and go back up to the front, place down a black stained glass paint on the side here, like so. And we're going to then take our blue stained glass, go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine blue stained glass panes back, just like that. And again, if you have that, wherever that stroker box is, you obviously have that trap door. You'll have that space between those glass panes, and it'll look something just like this. So basically at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and kind of dive into the differences. And on the left side here, we have obviously this one um, section here that is um, done up and something that you can do. Um, for this, uh, I would recommend also for Java players to take your debug stick and actually take your um, take it and actually use it to extend the glass panes going forward and aft like that to kind of help make this, area, this gap a little bit uh, less is wide and kind of cleans it up and makes it look a lot better for that um, section. And then we also want to go ahead and take our dark oak trap doors and we're going to place it down on top of these two smooth quartz blocks on top of that torpedo there. And lastly, we're just going to go ahead and place down a lever on this polished black stone top slab, like so, and have that point toward the quartz block. Now, on the other side here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some slabs and we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone two slabs on here. And we're going to go ahead and then go up and go to top slabs going forward like that. We'll then take our walls and we're going to place down two walls like this. And then that right there is pretty much all we need to do for our other our right side here. And that will pretty much complete it. Um, also here in the front of the build too, I do want to go ahead and mention that we do want to go ahead and grab a item frame and also a snowball. We're going to place our item frames on the bottom here of these walls as well as snowballs in the item frames just like that. Now for your pistons here, um, if you do have them placed, for, we're going to use our debug stick here by left clicking and um, getting to these prompt select extended false. We'll then right click that and it will get rid of that wood portion and what that helps do, do here is it kind of helps slope our aircraft a little bit better. So we'll just do that for all of our pistons here from layer number three and you'll start to see kind of the sloping here of the aircraft come together. Anyways though that is it for layer number um, four and with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer which will be layer number five. Moving into our next layer here we have layer number Five. For layer 5 to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a black carpet on top of this um, blue terracotta block here. And then we're going to place down an air brick slab and then two black stained glass blocks back. Behind those black stained glass blocks, we're going to place down a black concrete block. And then we're going to go back from the black concrete with a row of one, two um, blue terracotta. And so we have our one, two three, four, five, going all the way down here, it's gonna be a row of 14 of blue terracotta. We're gonna go ahead and then place down two yellow concrete blocks, again, our blue terracotta and a blue stained glass pane. Coming off the blue terracotta block, we're gonna go ahead and place down a lever like this, yellow stained glass pane here, two blue stained glass going forward, and one, two, three, polished black stone walls, then one, two, three, four, five, six um, blocks over here on the right side, Obviously on the left side, again, if you have this opening here, you're going to have that shulker box and the trap door right above that, just like we did for the previous layer. Now on both sides here, we are going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block. Then we're going to place down a blue concrete block, a um, then another black concrete block here. So on the left side, there's going to be two blue terracotta. On the right side, it's going to be one blue terracotta. Then we're going to place down a uh, another black concrete block here on the right side. Same thing will be done on the left side, then two black stained glass panes forward and then a dark oak trapdoor right there to go ahead and complete that front there. 
Now on the sides, we're going to place down two black stained glass panes, then a blue stained glass pane, and then on the right side, a black stained glass pane. Left side will have a blue stained glass pane. Right side, blue stained glass pane. Then right here, a, a black stained glass pane, and that'll be the same on both sides. Obviously, this side, you have the shulker box and, that, and trap door. If not, then it'll be blue uh, stained glass panes going all the way across there, like so. Now, again, like we did before, I would recommend taking your debug stick and using the same technique that we did here uh, on the bottom one, if you, if applicable, to go ahead and extend those panes to kind of fill that space in a little bit better. Um, anyways, though, with that all out of the way, uh, we do want to go ahead and go to our right side here, and we are going to place down a row of two of trapdoors on top of these walls, and we're going to then grab ourselves a lever, and we're going to place down a lever on top of this top side here. So it's going to look basically just like that. Now, once that is all complete there, um, that is pretty much everything I have here for this um, main structure here. The left side is complete. And well, the one thing we will go ahead and also do is for Java mostly, we're going to place down a lever here. So it's kind of above the glass pane there. We'll grab our debug stick here again. We're going to left click it till we get selected face. We're going to go and right click set to floor. And then we're going to go and rotate this out to the side like that. And then a wither skeleton skull coming off the lever. So it's going to look just like that there um, for the front side mirrors. And with that all done, that's pretty much it for the main structure there for this layer. Um, we can also go ahead and put our navy banners on the side of the aircraft. Now I'm not going to show you guys how to make the navy banners word for word. There are plenty of tutorials out there that do cover how to make the lettered banners. Um, but all you will need is an N, A, V, Y with a blue banner and the white writing. Um, you can see here it starts on this middle polished black stone wall on the tail here with the N, A, V, Y on the left side. And over here on the right side, we'll start on that middle wall again, placing down a Y, V, A, N. So just navy, back, navy backwards so you read left to right, and it reads left to right. After that is all done, that is everything we have there for layer number uh, 5. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number 6. Moving into our next layer, we moved into layer number... Six for layer six to be go ahead and get started with here. We're gonna place down a black stained glass pane here on the front, and then a black stained glass block back behind that. A black stained glass, or sorry, a black concrete block, and then a row of our uh, blue terracotta. That's gonna be a total of twelve blocks down the center. We're gonna go ahead and then place down uh, a total of three pistons. This can be done with polished black stone slabs as an alternative, and then we're gonna go ahead and then place down a sandstone wall here, and then two blue terracotta blocks that go back. After we have that all complete there, we then want to go ahead and place down wither skeleton skulls on the side of these two pistons here. Then one, two, three polished black stone walls going forward. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blue terracotta. A black stained glass block and a black stained glass pane. Then a black stained glass pane here to the side, a blue stained glass pane, and then we're going to take our polished black stone walls and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven upside down. Um, or sorry, it's going to be six walls or stairs back and then a top slab like that on the very end there. Now after that's done, we do want to go ahead and also grab our debug stick here and we are going to go ahead and use it to extend this blue stingless pane here toward um, that wall. So it's going to sit just like that. And once you have that all done right there, that's going to basically wrap up what we have for that. You can also go ahead and take your um, debug stick and you can also go ahead and right click those pistons on the back there as well to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. Uh, one thing also we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and go to the front stair here, so right where this lever kind of connects to. We're going to build a space of one from it. We're going to place it on a lever like this, and we're going to take our debug stick here. We're going to go ahead and left click it uh, until we get selected facing. We're going to right click this, rotate it around, and then we're going to go ahead and then have this selected. And we're going to go ahead and power this to true, so it kind of flows down. It looks like it connects up to that uh, lever like so. Again, for Java, if not if you're not on Java, I'd probably recommend just placing down an, an, an or a iron bar and then an iron bar there to kind of create that um, look like connection. And with that all done, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for this layer. I'm not missing anything. I'm just trying to make sure I'm do, do my double check here. Um, the one thing we will go ahead and cover as well is how to make these banners, which will be the National Star Insignia that will be on the side of the rear fuselage. So I will be going ahead and grabbing materials and I'll show you guys how to make that. All right guys, so let's go ahead and move into the banners here. Now the banners really aren't too difficult to make. The first one we're gonna be making here is that striped banner. We're gonna need a loom, obviously, uh, two white banners, one red dye, six blue dye, and two white dye, along with this flower charge banner pattern. 
We're going to go into our loom. We're going to place down our white banner as well as our red die. We're going to go into a line that goes horizontally for the center of our banner. And that's going to be our first um, step there. We're going to place this banner back into the loom along with our blue die. We're going to select the line that goes across the top third of the, of the uh, banner. And then the lower third. And you get this... Uh, two white stripes, the two blue, and the red stripe down the center, and that's going to be our first banner complete. After that, we want to go ahead and then place down our white banner into our loom, as well as our blue die. We're going to go ahead and uh, then do the line that goes horizontally for the center. We'll grab that banner, put it back into our loom, remove our blue die, place our uh, banner back into the loom, along with our white die and our banner pattern. This here is going to create a design that looks just like this. We'll grab that banner, remove our die, and also our banner pattern. We'll place this banner back into the loom, along with our blue die, we're going to do a line across the top third of the banner, like this. Again, we'll grab that uh, banner, move it back to the loom, remove our blue die, and put our white die in. We're going to go ahead and do the diamond, so this diamond right here, so you get that top pointed portion like that, and you have the first half of your star done. We'll grab that banner again, place it back into the loom, along with the remaining blue die. We're going to go ahead and do the triangle that comes up from the bottom, so a triangle like this. We'll grab that and put it back into our um, loom and then we're just going to do the lower third of blue across the bottom there to go ahead and complete that star design and once you have these two banners complete real simple you're going to go ahead and go to the first blue terracotta block after that top slab place down the striped banner star striped and over here same thing striped banner star striped and that right there is pretty much it pretty straightforward stuff and you have that um, star and senior done on both sides with that though that's going to conclude this layer let's move on to our next Moving into our next layer, uh, we have layer number seven. For layer seven to start with, we're going to place down a dark ochre trap door on top of this um, black stained glass block here. here. We're going to go ahead and then take our blue terracotta. We're going to place down a row going down the center here. This here is going to be a total of seven. We then want to place down a piston, a slab, and then a narrow dark ochre trap door. After we have that done, on the tail here, we're going to place down a blue terracotta block that goes on top of this one here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone up down the stair going back from it just like that. After that is all done, we're going to go ahead and then go off of the blue terracotta block with one, two, three slabs like this, a lever here on the bottom of that middle one, and we're going to flick that lever so it looks like it connects up there, and obviously we'll do the same thing over here on the other side. So it'll look like that. Then uh, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a blue stained glass pane to the side, a polished black stone wall, and then one, two, three, four, five blue terracotta, a piston, and a polished black stone slab. We're also going to place down a wither skeleton skull here at a slight angle or a 45 degree there in the corner, as well as a piston like this to the side. We're going to go then go forward one, two, blue terracotta, black concrete, and then we're going to go ahead and take our blue, place down blue terracotta, black concrete, and then a uh, dark oak trap door here, come off the side of the wall. We're going to go then place down a blue stained glass pane here, come off the side, then one, two, uh, three back, a polished black stone wall. And then one, two, blue stained glass after that. Once we have that all complete, we're going to go ahead and grab an item frame. Place down an item frame here on the side. And, or actually, rather, we're not even going to place the item frame. So my bad, um, that was something that we don't even need to do. Anyways, though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for this layer. Um, again, like we've been doing, you can take your um, debug stick here and you can go ahead and uh, alter these pistons and get rid of that, um, that wood. Anyways though, that is going to complete layer 7, and with that let's move on to layer number 8. Moving into our next layer, we moved into layer number 8. For layer 8 to go ahead and get started with here, and place down a polished black stone slab here on top of this block, then a row to a blue terracotta, and then a piston, um, which would be like this. Again, alternative here to the piston can be a polished black stone stair or a blue terracotta block, either one will work. Then we're going to place down a uh, wither skeleton skull here, that's a slight angle. Then one, two, three slabs going forward, and then taking our dark oak trap doors, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, just like that down the center. Well, then also, we're going to leave the piston alone for right now because we will be building a block on top of it, so we're going to leave it alone for right now. But on the back here, we can place down a polished black stone wall on top of this block, and a blue terracotta block on top of this one. Anyways, though, that is going to do it for everything we have for layer eight, and with that, we'll probably just move into our last final layers. I guess we'll into our final layers with layers 9 through 10. For these layers here, we're going to go ahead and start off by going to this section here. I will go ahead and make one modification by changing these two layers here on the tail to actually yellow, um, as I did do on the landed version, but for some reason not the top one, which I'm using for reference right now, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and make that quick adjustment. 
Now we're gonna go then place down a blue terracotta block here. The blue sting was pain here on the back. And then we're gonna place down a wither skeleton skull on top of this. And also on top of here. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna go then take a end rod, place it down, come out this wither skeleton skull, a polished anside block, two dark oak wood fence gates going forward, two going back, and then we're gonna go then place down two walls going down, and then two walls going up, and that's gonna make your um, till, which is gonna look like that. Now for this forward section here, to kind of go ahead and get us started on our rotors and Theoretically, honestly, we could probably just go ahead and knock out the rotors in this layer as well. Um, but we're going to start off with an anvil that's going to go on top of this section here. And we're going to go ahead and place down two dark oak wood fence gates coming off the anvil, going in all four directions. Now, after we have that done, I'm going to go ahead and fly over here to this one here for some quick um, reference. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and be placing down a row of polished anisite slabs. Um, which is going to be a total of ten, and then a brick slab on the very end. So... Uh, going ahead and grabbing these materials, we're going to go ahead and go to our model here, and we're going to go ahead and just build a row of 10 of top slabs of polished insight. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, brick slab, or um, could even use a, probably actually better, a red nether brick slab. And we're going to do the same thing going forward here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, same thing, red nether brick slab. And then again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Red nether brick slab, and then going to the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Red nether brick top slab. So it's going to basically look just like that there for your rotors. So pretty simple stuff. Again, nothing too crazy or anything like that. Now, on the very top here, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on top of the anvil, and we're going to go then place down a block that's going to be kind of on top of that second fence gate all the way around for our Java players. We'll place down a lever. On those, and we're going to go and use our debug stick. So, slash give at p debug stick, and we're going to then left click our debug sticks here until we get selected face, wall, right click, set these to floor, and we're going to go and do this all the way around. Then we're going to go and rotate these around like this to connect up to the wither skeleton skull. After we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then right click our piston like that and go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. And with that all done there, that's gonna basically complete our model here for the um, SH2 C Sprite. Uh, overall, really cool looking model. Uh, really looks um, pretty cool. It'll make an awesome addition to any of your uh, little Navy task forces or anything like that you might be wanting to create. Um, at this point in time though, we will be going ahead and moving on to the landed version. So I will go ahead and talk about how to build the front landing gear extended. So again, this here is the in-flight model complete. And with that, we're going to go ahead and now move into the landed version. So when it comes to go ahead and putting the landing gear extended up in the front, we will need to go ahead and delete this block of coal in this, um, this uh, fence gate, as well as that uh, item frame and that wall right there. This slab here, we're also going to go ahead and replace with a polished diorite slab. And then we're going to place down an end rod in this space here. We're going to go then place down a polished diorite slab here. Then a top slab that goes down from the um, wither skeleton skull. And we're going to go ahead and place down a diorite half slab like so. Going ahead and going forward from the half slab, we're going to place down a block of coal. And then a skeleton skull coming off the side of the block of coal like that facing toward the back. A lever on top of that uh, block there. And then also a end rod coming off this um, slab like that going forward. Then we're going to go ahead and grab a white banner and we're going to go and take our white banner. We're going to place down a black border and a black horizontal line for the center to go ahead and create this design here. And this design will be placed on both sides of the block of coal to go ahead and kind of help give it a bit of a better looking wheel type design. You can also use an item frame with a white stained glass paint. That is also a good option to do there. But once you have that done, you're going to take that same design, copy it over to the left side and you will have your front landing gear complete for the CH uh, or yeah, or sorry, SH to sea sprite anyways though that right there is going to complete my tutorial here for this uh aircraft if you guys do end up using this build i do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it this is me thank you for my side of the build to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for it you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on again a big special thanks to my patreon supporter derek frost for making this tutorial possible and as always feel free to check out my patreon page link is always in my video descriptions um to go ahead and uh, become a patron with that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Garrett 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.